Hi and welcome to this Wikipedia. Today we're having a look at an Oral-B Pro 2000 toothbrush which is refusing to charge. Now the battery on this is almost flat as indicated by the red flashing light but when we put it on the charger we are supposed to get a green flashing light to indicate that it's charging. Now this particular one costs about $100 Australian so it's not something that I particularly want to throw away and no surprise it's just out of warranty. So today we're going to open it up and see if we can work out why it's not charging. I really doubt that it's the actual charger itself. In fact I've got another toothbrush here so I know this charger is definitely working and I don't think much can go wrong with these and it's probably not recommended opening one of these up unless you're comfortable playing with mains power. So we'll put that aside and focus on the brush instead. Let's uh, get this open and see what we can find. Right, so obviously the first thing we need to do is open this up. So I'm just going to start by removing the brush head and there's a little sort of washer looking thing here that needs to come off. Now these models all seem to have a different way of opening them and the instructions I found online which I'll link to in the description um, do recommend that you soak these parts in hot water um, before you try and remove them. But seeing as I've already popped this one open previously, um, they do seem to come off a lot easier now, which is good and bad. Um, I guess a lot of these things weren't really built with repair in mind. They want you to um, basically throw them away and buy another one, of course, as every company wants these days. Because there are two clips holding the bottom of this um, base on, there's one at the front and one at the back, um, but you can't access them. So the easiest way is to push it in like that. And the first time I did this, it actually just opened up about maybe that much. And that was enough to get a, um, a pick in there just to sort of pry it open the rest of the way. But once that was done, the bottom came out and that's as far as I got. I thought, you know, it may be worth putting together a video for anyone else. Um, assuming I can get this repaired. So there's a spring in the base that just sits in between that coil. So I'll put those aside. And the way to get the whole um, assembly out is just to push down on the head. And this whole thing slides out. So I don't think it's going to be an issue with the battery or the motor because they still appear to work. Um, and there's a little bit of broken off plastic probably from one of those clips. So I'm probably going to have to just sort of put a dab of super glue in the base just to make sure it stays all in one piece when we put it back together. So like I was saying, I don't think it's the, the motor or the battery. Um, what I like to do with these things especially when we're dealing with tiny little circuit boards here, is I'll actually use the camera on my phone and just zoom in. And then just slowly pan over whatever I'm looking at, whatever I'm working on. See if I can see any issues. That's, oh, whoa, that's very zoomed in. That solder joint there looks a little bit iffy. Just there. But I think that's going to the motor, so I don't think that's going to be causing our problems. Yes, there's a lot of tiny little surface mount components. What I'm thinking here is that we're going to have a bad solder joint or a broken solder joint somewhere, and that's why it's no longer charging. It may have possibly been dropped. Oh, and that's the coil. Actually, is that, I think, I'll take a photo so it's a bit easier to see rather than me holding this camera. I think the wire from that solder joint to the coil is broken. And yes, that would definitely stop it from charging. So the way these work, there's a coil on this side and there's a coil inside the charger base. By having these two coils of wire so close to each other, um, they create a magnetic field or an electromagnetic field and that's how most wireless charging systems work. But yeah, I definitely think that 
that break down here is going to cause some issues. I don't like the look of that solder joint though. Might just touch that up while we're in here because it should look shiny and that one looks very dull. It's possible maybe um, some water or toothpaste has got in there. Uh, I'm, normally you'd want to remove the old solder. What I'm going to do is just touch it up with a bit of fresh solder. That should be enough to keep it happy. And I should really be using a bigger tip for this. That wire has definitely broken off that solder joint and there's not enough of it left to reconnect it. Um, what I'm going to do is use a tiny bit of a component legs, probably off a resistor or a capacitor or something, and attempt to bridge those two connections. All right, let's have another look. So it appears that that is now reconnected. Um, easiest way to find out is to test it. I'm just gonna cut off the rest of this extra leg, otherwise it's gonna short to something else. That should be fine. Let's test this out. You might want to clean that out. Ew. Right. Plug that in and look. Green flashing light, it's charging. Awesome, so that appears like that was the fix. Um, as I said, I'll clean this out and put a little dab of super glue just around the front here so it hopefully holds itself back in one piece, but there you go. We have repaired a toothbrush and haven't had to spend any money doing it, um, assuming that you've already got a soldering iron and solder and stuff. If not, um, consider getting one. They are very handy items to have and a must have when you're doing repairs. So um, that's about it for me. I'm going to put this back together. Thank you for watching this Wikipedia and uh, consider buying me a coffee if this has helped you out. Um, subscribe, check out my other channel, the Retro Channel, where I do repairs on retro consoles and computers if you so choose. And um, Thanks again. Bye.